So my name is Alejandro Hernandez. I'm trying to put a sticker, but it's not gonna work. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about building for heterogeneous systems. Uh, what else? I work at Microsoft. Uh, views are my own. <clears throat> so again, we're gonna talk a little bit about heterogeneous devices. So I'm gonna use the term interchangeably. Like sometimes I say system, sometimes I say architecture, sometimes I say de uh, devices. Uh, I refer to the same thing. Um, we're gonna see a little bit about the, how the Linux flow works and how the bare metal flow works or what's the expected uh, way for it to work. Um, I know this is the Linux plumbers, but we're gonna talk uh, about bare metal and RTOS builds as well. Uh, working with SDKs, with uh, with the Raspberry Pi Pico and the, and Sefer as examples, and specifically, I'm going to talk about the the current BitBig solution that we have, which is multiconfig, and how we can test this uh, heterogeneous builds. <clears throat> so, a heterogeneous device. Sorry, um, essentially it means that there's multiple architectures on the same device on the same system. Uh, typically, there's a big core and there's a small core, and then the big core is going to run Linux. The small core is going to run uh, an RTOS or bare metal application. You can do, you can do anything, right? But this is typically how it, the way it works. The reasons for this vary, but usually they're related to like power consumption and you know safety critical applications on the on, on the RTOS um, processing power. In general, it just makes your device more efficient if certain tasks are done on a certain core and not the other. Um, again, like I said. <clears throat> the you can do any combination at, at this point, right? Like you can just you can just run Linux, you can run Linux and bare metal, Linux and an RTOS, only bare metal, only RTOS, or Linux and Linux. And that Linux can be different than the other Linux, right? Like it could be an RT base or it could be a tiny or whatever. Uh, it, it's up to you. It depends on the the answer is always all it depends, right? It depends on the application. Something is gonna work for you and it may not work for some some other person, developer. Uh, Essentially, the way this works in a, at a high level is you create a cross toolchain for Architecture X, you create a, a cross toolchain for Architecture Y, uh, package A is compiled, cross compiled for Architecture X, package B is compiled for Architecture Y, and at the very end, you sort of like package it in, in a way that it's uh, uh, deliverable, uh, the artifacts for, for either uh, of, of the systems, uh, either the images or, or binaries uh, in the other case. So the, in in my opinion, the main issue with this is that the flows for developers are different, um, and that that that's why it's 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 a complicated uh, problem. For Linux, we have mostly figured it out. Have you, usually you have like a Git repository, you get the sources from somewhere, um, you uh, grab the toolchain from from the host. Uh, obviously, if you have like a like an actual build system, like you know Bitbig or whatever, you're gonna get your toolchain from there. But if you go to like any repo for like a, an open source component uh, package, it, it's literally the instructions are gonna say you know download the package uh, the toolchain from your package manager, and that's supposed to work, right? Um, and you can do whatever ID of your choice. Uh, for bare metal, that's usually not the case. Uh, sure, the sources come from somewhere. But usually you get like a vendor provided uh, toolchain and a vendor provided SDK may be there, a vendor provided IDE that's wired with that toolchain and it needs like specific, uh, you know, you like to do the uh, dance around what it's compiling or something to make it work. So it's, it's, it's complicated. Uh, for Linux, in the current bit big solution is, is Deptool and I think it, it works fine but it's not as simple for, for bare metal applications. Um, so the bare metal toolchain, if again, if, if you were to build a bare metal application, I'm using the <clears throat> ARM embedded toolchain as an example, uh, it's usually gonna tell you, hey, go, go to the ARM's website and, and download the ARM embedded toolchain. Uh, it provides GCC, it provides uh, Vin Utils, and it provides Neolib, but there's, that's fine. It works. Um, the, there's you could also um, integrate it uh, in your current build if you're already using uh, Bitbig by setting your your uh, TC libc variable to newlib. You'll essentially get 
you'll emulate whatever you're getting from the Arm Embedded Toolchain. Just newer versions. Um, right. <clears throat> so how does the, I, in my defense, I don't, we didn't know it was gonna be this small. So I, I know you guys can't see anything, but uh, I'm gonna try and explain it real quick. Um, the, um, this is bare metal first. So in, in, in OE Core, there's a package that's a reference for bare metal. Um, this is the repo for that package. And it has like the instructions, there's nothing. Great, the, oh, there we go. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, five bucks, useless. Um, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna use the, the mouse. The, you can barely see it. Anyway, so so first you, you clone the repo, of course, you source the environment. And in this case, I, I'm using a uh, QME ARM64 machine and I'm simply setting the TC libc as bare metal. So I've, as I told you, you could set it to new live as well, but if it's bare metal, it could be bare metal. And there's essentially it's the same thing without new live. Um, and then you just bit, bit, bit bake uh, bare metal hello world and you'll get a bare metal application as a reference again. Uh, you can, it's, it's wired up with QMU as well. So you can just run QMU uh, on it and you'll get a hello message there that says hello open embedded. Um, this works for um, QME ARM64, x86, x86-64, ARM, ARM v5, RISC32, and RISC64. So you can, it, it's the same thing, it's just uh, the message is gonna change. Uh, the source code is not actually the same because you know there's like uh, linker scripts and stuff that, that needs to change. But it, either way, you should, as a developer, you should now uh, not see any di anything different. Um, so what if you wanted to build something a little larger, like an RTOS? Uh, in this case, I'm using the uh, free RTOS example with the meta free RTOS layer. The instructions are essentially the same. Um, the only extra thing there is that you add a layer, the, the, the meta free RTOS layer, and you set the distro to free RTOS, you set the machine. In this case, I'm using QMU RMB5 uh, or you could use, um, there's an STM32 STM microcontroller you can use, you, those nucleo boards, um, that, that works as well, or the, the Raspberry Pi Pico as well. Um, it, again, pretty pretty simple, bit big free art demo, and then you can run QMU, and you should see the output on your serial console for, for QMU at least. Uh, Obviously, if you connect the board uh, to the serial console, you should it, it should work as well. Um, so this is how. Right. So this is this is tackling the problem, the simplest problem first. So how do we build it separately? Right. Um, there are some cases where the like I said on the um, <clears throat> developer workflows. Sometimes you get a vendor provided SDK that you kind of need, so you need to wire that up. Um, to, to be able to work with, with their current flow. Uh, for example, the, the Raspberry Pi Pico and Cephyr, uh, they, they have an SDK. There, there's several approaches you can follow here. Uh, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I, I, am, I am saying one is better than the other, but the, there's several ones. Um, the approach one is you create a native recipe that provides the, the SDK. What it'll do is you'll fetch the SDK from whatever you're supposed to fetch it, and then uh, you install it. Um, and then depend it on the application recipe, right? So it's by the time you are building your application on the recipe specific sysroot, uh, your SDK binaries are gonna be available, right? Um, that's the best approach by the way. And it's, it's a fact, I'm just kidding. Uh, the approach number two that you can also use is um, on the application recipe itself, uh, you can fetch the source code for the application, but you can also fetch the SDK there and then wire it in and, and use it from there. Uh, it, it depends, uh, but I, I think the other one is might be better uh, or cleaner, uh, if if that makes sense. Right. So so now we know how we how we can build them separately, right? So what? How do we how do we build the whole thing for the whole product in in one in one build. Um, this is where <clears throat> BitBake multi-config comes into play. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means that uh, you're manually configuring BitBake to parse an additional conf. Usually you you get your, like by default, you get your like local.conf and that's your main configuration. You can, you know, uh, put variables in there and whatever. 
uh, in, in this case, you're, you're telling BitBig, hey, parse this other one that I want to build as well. Um, there's this concept as well of uh, multi-config dependencies that allow BitBig to use the same build uh, and uh, to, to use two builds, if that makes sense. With, it could be different, you could use different tool chains, you could, do, you could use different OSs, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can you can just do that. Um, the one really good thing about that is that you can the shared state can be reused across multi config, so you don't have to like rebuild everything. At least the native part of it will be reused, right? Because if you're building for a bare metal stuff and then Linux here, obviously you can't use that. But native stuff can be shared, so it it does accelerate things uh, quite a bit. So how do <clears throat> how do we make this work? Uh, it's actually quite simple. I put an example here. Um, on your local account, you set your machine. In this case, my main build is a bare metal one. Um, so I'm setting the CM32 as my machine. Uh, but the the interesting part, is, part there is the last variable, the VB multi config variable. I think you can see it, so it's great. Um, and in that one, I'm specifying the name of the config that I'm telling BitBig to parse as well. And then there's a, there's a directory called multi config where I put that file with that same name, dummy arc 64. Um, and in that file, I am creating a separate build. In this case, again, the, my main build is gonna be a free Artos with STM32 as, as a machine. And the other one is gonna be a QMU ARM64. Uh, the distro is gonna be Pocky. And I'm only switching the, the temp directory uh, for, for that one. Um, and lastly, on I'm creating a, a multi-config dependencies on the last line. Um, it's a little convoluted, but essentially what it means is I am telling the um, Arc64 build uh, for when I'm building core image minimal for the Arc64, I'm telling it that the image, do image task should depend on my uh, on my do image task for the free Artos. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, basically, whenever I issue the command to build core image minimal for the Arc64, it'll automatically pull the free Artos build as a dependency and it'll build both things. Um, I am sorry that you can't see anything there, but is there a question? Yeah, uh, does it matter which one is like the main config? It doesn't matter. It uh, You would have to swap around that. You just swap it, line. yeah, it, it, it's the same thing. Uh, I, I just uh, I just used it, you know, to change, switch things up a bit, but uh, it could be the other way around. No, no problem. Like when you do like bit big core image minimal, like the um. Oh, I'll I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'll make sure to address that. So you can't see anything there. I'm sure the virtual folks can. Uh, so, so which is good. But what I'm trying to say here is that there's two. Usually, when you try and build, you only get one of those, right? You only get your default config, and now you have two. Uh, I, again, you can't see, but one says that it's building uh, for ARM OEA EAVI, so that's a bare metal toolchain, and the other one says it's building for Linux. Um, so that means it's working. Bitbig is parsing the extra conf, and this is the way it works when you're building. You can see, uh, you can't see, but it says there that it's building the free Artos demo for the main config, and you can see a small MC prefix on the other one that's saying uh, for the dummy arc 64 I'm building core image minimal right so and that's the way you address it if you want to build for one or the other uh, for in this case like the core image minimal is depending on free artos but free artos is not depending on core image minimal so if I build free artos it's only going to build free artos if I build the core image minimal it'll pull the other one right um, and if you want to again if you want to uh, build a specific one you, you type MC as a prefix so bit big MC uh, quotes and then the 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 the, the name of your multi-config and then the recipe you want to build. So in this case, the command I'm using is bitbake mc quotes dummy arc 64 core image minimal, and that's building both at the same time. Uh, this is how the artifacts look. Um, again, you can't see, but that's great. Uh, on the first one, I see the artifacts for my Linux build. I have my kernel 6.5, which is great. And I have the binaries, uh, the green ones that are in the bottom, they're the, the bin, the elf, and the hex file um, that you're supposed to flash on the other device. Um, <clears throat> testing. Did, sorry, did I address your question with the MC prefix? Okay. Um, 
So testing can different OSs can be done with open embedded infrastructure, existing infrastructure to some extent, to some extent because it was designed for Linux and it has certain expectations of how that's supposed to look. Like um, at some point you're gonna see the the prompt that says root, right? Because you're you're the root user. Uh, and obviously that's not true for like a, a, a bare metal application or something. So if you can emulate that in some way, you can use that and test it. But these are still treated as separate builds, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully you can see a little bit better there. But as you can see, I am calling the test image um, task for core image minimal for my big core. So MC big, it means I'm building for the Linux one. And the other one is MC small, and I'm building like the bare metal application uh, and running the, the test image task for that one. Um, so future closing thoughts, whatever you want to call it, um, open questions. Um, so building your own cross tool chain, it's, it provides some advantages. Like it, uh, you can get access to like newer versions really fast. Um, uh, obviously you can quickly fix, it's up to you when you fix things, right? Like you, you don't have to wait until like a CV fix for stack protection for arc 64 cascades all the way down, right? You can just put it there and, and, and you're done. So there. There are good reasons for you to use your own cross tool chain. Um, again, I'm gonna kind of reuse what Bruce said before. Um, we're not mandating to use that you use it. If you want to use it, go ahead. It's it's possible and it, it has its its pros and cons. There's a question. Oh, and then um, the for specifically for bare metal stuff, the vendor ID may not use exactly the upstream tool chain. And it could be, again, it, it may ask you to like dance around with what's compiling or something. So it's 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 complicated. Um, the, the one thought I have about multi-config um, is that right now you're just, you're describing the build, right? You're, you have a build and you're saying, oh, I build this thing as well, but that's the build, that's not the product. So if you have a product that has two different architectures, you're not describing that. You're you're doing it per build. There's no like uh, uh, system variable that includes two different machines or something like that. So that uh, it, it it works. It just it, it may be able. We may be able to get it better. Uh, is there a way that we can describe a full product, a full model of something that has two specific models of or architectures? I wanted to uh, uh, touch on that one. So uh, yeah, right now multi-config you can uh, do uh, uh, multiple images basically, and uh, you would then uh, have to flash them separately. Right. And, uh, 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 so uh, how do you do a product then? And uh, next step would be how do you uh, combine all that and maybe have uh, uh, an SDK with uh, uh, multi uh, both both, both uh -huh. of them. Yeah, multi-config and. Uh, yeah, uh, several people looked into that. Uh, I looked into that as well. So, uh, for example, MetaTI uses multi-config to build uh, uh, native SDK. Uh, sorry, sorry uh, to build uh, bare metal uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. So, some former images. Uh, uh, so, the uh, newer TI uh, uh, parts, they are uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, SOCs, and uh, they do require some, some of those right. uh, bare metal uh, components. So yeah, and uh, that piece is not yet fully supported in in Yocta, unfortunately, at this point. So we do uh, we, we we can do uh, uh, multi-config builds, uh, get the images, but then how do we then uh, put it uh, wrap it up uh, into a, a product like right this? exactly? So that's uh, that that's still open question. So uh, and uh, there are different different implementations. I've I've, I've looked into uh, uh, doing uh, native SDK uh, tool chains uh, and basically wrapping that and uh, having. Uh, a final product with multiple tool chains one yeah. for Linux, one for uh, bare metal. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's it's a. Ongoing. I'm actually kind of guilty about that because I I own the bug for um, multiple multi config as the case. So, but yes. the, it's 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 a complicated issue for sure. Yeah. Um, I I guess it, things have have gotten better. So if I look at it again, maybe maybe it'll just the answer is just right there. Sure. Um. Also, there's, it's kind of complicated to integrate into like the vendor workflows. Um, so we kind of want to make it easy for the user to, I guess, switch. Um, I, I, no, don't mandate, but I, I make it easy for them. And it's complicated because 
uh, vendor X uses has a way to flash things, and then vendor Y has a different way of flashing. So it's it's a complicated problem. Uh, we may be able to get away with like sort of like a common way that is modular, and you can uh, you know uh, switch things up a little bit, and it's going to work for you. Um, so yeah, the the open question I had there was like, how can we integrate better with vendors and their their current workflows? And I think that's it. As, are there are there any questions? We still have five minutes left. Tying into my question from earlier, later in the talk you showed like MC little and, or MC small and MC big. Right. Um, is can you always can you refer to like the the non multi config? Uh, yes. At, at, with that MC prefix? Yeah, you don't have to, because if you just type bit big whatever, it'll automatically do it for the the default. Uh, but if you want to refer it, it's probably cleaner. Uh, you can just do MC quotes, and then quotes again, as in like an empty empty string there, and it you're referring that way to the to the default one. Oh, default secure now? Okay. Uh, it, he just said that default is a keyword. <laughs> so, uh, also, uh, so Bitbake uses uh, uh, this syntax. So, the uh, multi config column, uh, the name of multi config, and then uh, the target. Uh, internally, for MCD pans, you actually have another uh, field. Uh, you want to cover that? In, sorry, what? Uh, internally, in the MCD pan, uh, where, like, you, you had another example if you scroll back yeah yeah there so you have actually a double uh, uh column there so can you explain that i don't i created that and i don't remember what it is <laughs> uh well actually in in bit, bit bake when you actually call bit bake you specify mc column and the uh target oh right it's the other architecture is the other sorry it's the other multi configure depending from and, and here it's like from and to yes right it's from and to uh-huh so so the 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 core image minimal from the dummy arc 64 will depend on the empty in that in this case is the empty string which is the main conf uh that's why it's depending for the image task for the free artos image uh that's coming from the main uh, uh or default config yeah uh, in the in the documentation of the octopod you can find it uh, uh there's a there's a good explanation there so where does this free RTOS demo STM32 come from? The the recipe from the, the so that's the package that you're building. Uh, that's the name of the package or the name of the recipe. Oh, okay. And it's coming from the the meta free RTOS layer. And this this is this recipe is designed to be run from the Air64 config. Which one? Sorry. Which recipe? The the example, the core is minimal. That's designed to be like in the AR64 multi config. Sure, yes. You can put a BB append and uh, use it on your own architecture. And and it could be any image. I just I just use the core image minimal as an example. So the free RTOS demo do image task. Right. Is Taking the the built free image and installing it into lib firmware somewhere. It is okay, and so it's sort of a partial rootfs image, and then the two rootfs images get pushed together. So the you'll get a rootfs for Linux, not for free artos, but you'll get an RPM or dev or whatever uh -huh. uh, that you can also use, and you know update let's say let's say you want it like from your big core you can uh in user space you can flash the other core for whatever reason right so you can technically do an update with a package manager get the latest rpm dev or whatever on your system it will install it in lib firmware the new uh binary and you can then flash it using something in user space You, you'll find it, yes. So, yeah, and uh, there are challenges there uh, as well. So, uh, first of all, there is a, a separate temp deer for another multi-config. 
And uh, one of the challenges is basically to get in uh, artifacts be, uh, across uh, uh, separate uh, time Tem there's, Tem yes. Because so, one, sorry, one build is not aware of the other one, really. And uh, uh, even more uh, challenging is actually to use, uh, to generate the final uh, weak image, because weak image uh, has absolutely no knowledge about uh, separate temperatures. And uh, you can specify boot files for weak image uh, you want to actually put in a separate partition, but they have to be in the same deploy area. So that that's... Uh, what I faced, I actually I had to combine uh, uh, deploy uh, directories from separate uh, uh, term directories yeah. because we uh, cannot uh, access uh, across yeah. a separate term. So you the the only workaround that I've done in that case is you kind of you you know the name of your multi config right? So you, something you're setting, the build system is not aware of it, but you can declare a variable and th with the location of your artifacts on the other config, and you can grab them from there. It's not great, but it works. No. 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 Uh, this is a great conversation. Um, we all have processors that now have many other processors running stuff that isn't Linux, and building it is important. But it is now lunchtime, and we are going into <laughs> lunch. Thank you. So we may all go to lunch now. Please, thank you all for coming. Uh, really, really glad that people showed up. Thank you.